want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Just thinking about the message, I was thinking about, um, you know, hey, we're in a time, we're in a season where um, I, we call this um, March Madness, um, good versus evil. And so many things have been going on in this very hour that, <laughs> you know, it's just so crazy. And so one of the things that I'm trying to express to you today is that you're, you are a peculiar person. Yes. You're a peculiar person. Come on. You're strange. You're weird. There, there's something wrong with you. The definition of a misfit is someone or something that doesn't fit in. Yes. You're misfit. You don't fit in. That's it. You don't fit in. You don't fit in. Something doesn't fit in. And so then, um, because you don't, because it doesn't fit in, that means that that means it makes you an oddball. Yes. The definition of a misfit is something or something that doesn't fit in. It makes you weird. Some of you may have grown up. In your walk, and some of you probably have been called weird, and some of you may have been called strange, and um, some of you may feel like that you're, hey, something about me is different. Somebody else may have even come to you and said, something is different about you, little Johnny. Uh, I know little Johnny have been all up in this message <laughs> all month long, poor little Johnny. <laughs> uh, but Johnny had uh, something has always been weird about little Johnny. Uh, people don't understand um, the 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 internal or the inner secrecies, uh, the inner proclivities um, that you may have. You have always been different growing up. Uh, and just always something's just a little weird about you. Yes. And I'm here to tell you today that it's nothing wrong with you just being just a little strange, the, something about you just being a little weird. It's quite all right. Something about you just don't fit in. You feel like that you're a misfit. Yes. Something has been just a little off. People always try to figure you out. Yeah, come on. But it seems like, you know, maybe some people kind of get it, and some people may have touched on it a little bit, but that's not quite who you are because there's something weird, there's something strange, there's something peculiar uh -huh. about you because you are a chosen generation. You yeah. are a royal priesthood and, and so a lot of people they look at little Johnny at an early age and they see that little Johnny likes to read. That's something different. A lot of kids these days they don't even like to read. Put them in front of a PlayStation, put them in front of an Xbox and then they'll have the time of their life all day and all night. At least when we were kids we would go out and go play. We'll, I'll go hop on my bike and at least go run down, you know, go down the street, go play with some friends. Uh -huh. but, uh, but, but little Johnny for some strange reason, enjoy reading. That's not normal. Little Johnny, like listening to gospel music, yeah. that's not normal. Little Johnny like to sing in the choir, that's not normal. Little Johnny like uh, being in church, that's not normal. A uh, little Johnny even attend prayer service, and you'll probably even see little John down here at the altar crying and weeping before the Lord. And but that's not normal. There's something different about little Johnny. Hallelujah.
and people, not, people try to figure out how come we're no different, how come we're strange, how come, you know, stuff just don't appear like, you know, we don't go along with what's in the natural. We go along with what's in the supernatural. We're not from this world. God said in his word that may, we may live in the world, but we are not of the world. Glory to God. And that right there allows me to have great joy and pleasure in knowing that I don't have to act like these people here today. I don't have to act like, I don't have to smoke, I don't have to drink, I don't have to you know, do drugs to make me feel like that I fit in because I'm a misfit. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, the, my, my, one of the points that I was going to say here is that, matter of fact, I'm going to get back up here and say, so much and one of the things that I just did a quick research on is OCDs obsessive compulsion disorder obsession compulsive disorder there are so many different types of OCDs and the conditions could manifest in a hundred different ways but most people with OCDs center around one or multiple things the most common are professionalism, contamination, and fear of harming yourself or harming others. Beyond those, OCD can it, it had it had you to fix it on certain things, certain subjects, certain fears that you have. It tends to fixate on what people care about the most. This will make the symptoms um, all the more distressing. For example, someone values being good and honest above all else, and they may experience obsessions and compulsions around fears and having been lied to someone in their life, or them, somebody lying on them, or somebody lying in their life. And so they compose, they obsess of it. You know, somebody's picking on me, somebody's always talking about me, and I, I don't know how come they're always talking about me. Uh, I, I just don't understand, and, and you know, how, how come this happened? How, they obsess about it. Yes, come on. And what ends up happening, when you obsess about something, then it, it, it becomes a trigger. And those things trigger uh, your mind. Those things trigger things that, 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 that set you off. Many have in, in what's called intrusive thoughts. An intrusive, an intrusive thought uh -huh. or thoughts is an image, a, a body sensation, an urge that seems to pop up in your mind uh -huh. out of nowhere. Come on. You can be doing absolutely nothing. There's something. <laughs> Hit your mind, and it's something that probably happened years ago. But because you you never got delivered from that hurt, you never got delivered from that pain. It triggers something on the inside of you that makes you obsess about it. It makes you compulsive about something. If somebody touch your right arm, uh, you need to touch the left arm because it's just uneven. Yes. Obsession, compulsion. It, it, it sometimes it's totally random, and other times. It may, it may trace back to something. You know, one of the things that I learned in, in counseling, or in marriage counseling, is that uh, me and my wife, we had to learn that when, uh, when something has affected us in our past, we have to be bold enough and come back and say, honey, you know, that kind of hurt me. It, it took my mind back to something that happened to me earlier in my life. And when it happened to me earlier uh, in my life, you know, it triggers something. Yes. Certain words, some th certain things that you do. And so we have to be honest enough with each other to be able to say, okay, you know, honey, I'm sorry, I apologize for that, you know, 
Because what happens is that if we don't talk about it, yeah. we become disabled. Come on, take your time. We will become disabled. Intrusive thoughts can be confusing, uh, it can be frightening, and it can even disable you. Yeah. Why well, I'm talking about OCDs? Because there are some people that need to be set free from the bondage of your doctor's dog, their di diagnostic. Uh -huh. Some of you have some type of OCD uh, and, and, and they try to label you as having mental health of disorder. They, they try to uh, have you have these disabilities so that you can't move forward with the plans and the purpose that God has for you in your life. But I'm here to declare to you today that you need to stop living in fear of what somebody said about you. Stop living in fear of what people think about you. Stop living in fear if things don't go your way and be absolutely perfect. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, I know that's some trigger for you inside of you. And they make you feel like that if certain things don't line up in your life, that it's not right, then that means I'm not right. Right, right, come on. It's not right, and I gotta fix it before my whole life falls apart. Okay. I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, that your life is not going to fall apart. Your life is not going to fall apart. Your life isn't a mess. The Bible says that if you trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. There's no kind of way that your life will fall apart. Yes, come on. Your life isn't falling apart. OCDs control certain people. It's a control factor in your life. And if you don't have control over everything in your life, you give no room for God to move uh -huh. on your behalf. Uh -huh. You have to make sure you give God room yeah. to move in your life. Leave that OCD stuff alone, but there is a difference between having things in order uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference between having things in order and uh, then being overly compulsive about a situation. Yeah. Sometimes you have to learn how to release it. Yeah. And I, I'm just gonna hit my, my, my ladies really quick. Ladies, I know sometimes it's hard for you to release things that has happened to you in your past. You know, one of the things that you have to understand that uh, men are givers and women are receivers. Yeah. And a lot of times when, when a woman receives something in their life, they receive something in their spirit, it talks and it turns and it does all kind of flips and everything else on the inside of them. And they don't know how to release it. Unto yes. God. Come on, come on. Ladies, you need to learn how to release it. I know that he hurts you, but yes, you have to release it. Yes, I understand that she tried to take your man, but I want you to know right now that it's over and you got to release it. Yes, he may have cussed you out. Yes, she probably cussed you out, but it's over. I need for you to release it, man, and woman of God. Um, and you continue to let these people play around with your heartstrings. You let this person do this and this person do that to you. I'm here to tell you that it's over and that you need to release it. Release it out of your mind. Release it out of your heart. Oh, hallelujah. You need to release it. Because why? That's borderline OCD-ish. Yeah. And every time you think about him, Every time you think about her, every time you think about that situation, every time you think about the job that uh, lets you go for no reason, Come on. your anxiety goes up. Man. Come on. Come your anxiety on. goes up. You get overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Feeling now that, you know, now that you're, you know, your, your anxiety is up, you're becoming overwhelmed. This is uh, how panic attacks begin to happen. And your brain won't shut off. Yes. So I'm here to encourage you, man. I'm here to encourage you, woman. Uh, I know that I said the ladies because, you know, I don't have a lot of time to go into the reasons why, you know, uh, how come it's so hard for ladies to let go of soul ties. Um, but it's for the simple fact is that they receive. Yeah, we're carriers. You're carriers. I like that, honey. You're carriers. And you wonder why 
How come it was so easy for him just to, y'all just broke up, he moved on somebody else? That's it, come on, sir. Because men, we, you know, a lot of men, I ain't say all men, but a lot of men, they just brush stuff off. That's it, yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean that they, they're, they're not emotional, or they don't have emotions, or they don't feel, they're not sensitive. Just how men is built. That's for it. Whatever way. But men, but women, they carry stuff with them just like you carry your child for nine months. You carry them. You carry the hurt. You carry the burden. You carry uh, 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 the growth that's on the inside of them. Uh, and, 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 and the child begins to form on the inside of you. But the thing that you have to make sure that you release on the inside of you yeah. and that uh, make sure that pain and that hurt don't grow Come on, a child. Grow. It doesn't grow on the inside of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm here today to encourage you today to release the hurt, release the pain, release the car, release the house, release the child, release your father that was never there for you. Release that ex fiance who left you for your best friend. You need to be able to shout and say, I release it. I need you to tap it in, type yes. it in the comments that I release it. I release it. I release every hurt. I release every pain. I release every distraction. I release every job. I release every car. Every single thing that meant me no good, I release it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's currently the darkness that some people are experiencing in today's generation. The Bible says that we are a chosen generation. Yes. God has chosen us during this time period, during this year of 2022, to let people know that this is the year that I'm not no longer living like Cinderella. Hallelujah. I'm no longer living uh, to scrub floors. I'm no longer thinking about um, uh, living this life uh, that nobody needs me no good. I'm no longer carry, carrying the junk from the past. I'm no longer living that kind of life. It's buried. It's dead. I'm leaving it alone. My God, come on now. I'm releasing it because I am a chosen vessel of God who had a dark past. Yes. Yes. Every single one of us have had some kind of a dark path. But I've seen the light of Christ who pulled me out My God. of darkness into his marvelous life. I serve a God who reached down from the guttermost to the uttermost to make sure to know that I am saved, to make sure to know that I am delivered, to make sure to know that I have been risen. He has saved me. He has raised me. He has filled me with his precious Holy Ghost. He has healed me to the uttermost. I am no longer Cinderella, no longer scrubbing these floors, no longer serving my sisters, no longer living with the wicked mother. I'm no longer serving the, the, uh, the wicked witch of the West. I'm no longer that person anymore. I have been changed. I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind. I am no longer a slave to sin. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am no longer a slave to death, hell, and the grave. I do. Uh, I no longer do I fit in this world. Yes, sir. I'm a misfit. Yes. I don't fit here. I no longer do the things that people saw me do growing up. Yes. I no longer think the same way. Yes. The Bible says when I was a child, I did things as a child, but when I grew older, 
I gave those childish things away. I don't fit in here no more. I am a misfit. I don't no longer smoke weed anymore to have the pain uh, to go away. I am a misfit. I don't drink no more uh, uh, the, the, the carries of this world. I, I don't drink and smoke anymore uh, uh, and just have the bottle, just took the bottle back anymore because I am a misfit. I don't fit into this world. I don't fit into what seems normal. Yes, come on. Yeah, come on. I'm a misfit. I'm a misfit. I don't belong here. The Bible says that when we believe in God, when we come into the kingdom of God, that we are a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I want to solicit to you today, my brothers and my sisters, to let you know that you don't fit in for a reason because you are a misfit. Come on. Do you understand that the Christian faith is the largest religion here in the United States, but it's currently on a decline? My God. In the early 2000s, 78% of people in the United States proclaimed Jesus as Lord and personal and their personal Savior. But survey says now only 65% of U.S. citizens believe that Jesus Christ is Messiah. And I'm not talking about coming to church. My God. Jesus. I'm talking about people professing, believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Do you understand what the Messiah means? The Messiah means that he is the person who came from heaven to earth, who died on, uh, died on a cross for your sins so that you can live again. Do you understand that there's people who don't currently believe that there's a heaven and a hell, or uh, they believe that there's a heaven, they don't believe that it's a hell. They say yes. earth right now, is hell. Yes. I'm here to tell you today, I'm sorry. Earth is not hell. That's it. Earth is not hell. This, this, this is a passing door My God. for us. I want you to understand that we're not originally from here. We're misfits. Yes. We came down here to do a job. To be to let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And one of these days, he's going to come back like a thief in the night. I want to read this one last scripture, then I'm going to pretty much take it home here. Matthew 24, 5 through 14. And this is the NIV version of the Bible. My God, my God. Just to let you know how... How I know that we're living currently in the end times. This is Jesus talking here. He says, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. I will and will deceive many. Come on, come on. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Thank you. For me will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. Wow. My God. Jesus. I just thought we were talking about Christians. Believe me. Now, I myself, personally, I use the word Christian because this is what a lot of people acknowledge what we believe in. We believe in Christ. So they call us Christians. But in the, in, in the New Testament of the Bible, that was a derogatory term. They were like, they were them Christians. Christians. 
Yes, it does mean Christ-like, but it was not. It was not looked happy upon. And so I myself, I like to call myself a believer. I don't mind the word Christian. No, no, I ain't trying to tell nobody to say that you know that you're not a Christian. Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I believe that he died and risen again for my sins. Uh, I am a believer. I believe that he's the Messiah. I believe that he is Christ. I believe he's Christos, the anointed one. I believe that. But the Bible says here, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive so many preachers out here that's deceiving people for money. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to deceive you for money. Come on. So I guess I'm a misfit. Ha! Huh. Because, <laughs> I, because I, I don't go around asking people and putting up the cash app every single time. Come on. I must be a misfit. You hear wars and rumor of wars, but see to it that you are not alarm such things must happen but the end is still to come that God Jesus is trying to tell us listen as yes. much as we try to avoid it it has to happen nations will rise up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms there will be famines oh COVID-19 oh Jesus famines and earthquakes Jesus in various places. All these are the beginning of birthing pains. I want to stop right there. Birthing pains. Uh -huh. The Bible says that the earth is growing for the men and the women of God to rise up and take their place in the earth. So when you see certain things happening, when you see tornadoes happening, when you see um, things happening um, in the world right now, I can tell you right now that those are birthing pains. The earth is growing. When you hear of earthquakes, they say they never heard of an earthquake. They just had a volcano to erupt in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The earth is groaning for us as believers. Yeah. to rise up and take our place. He, the earth is groaning for revival um, to be able to hit. The Bible says, then you will be handed over to be prosecuted and put to death. A lot of people don't want to die for the cause of Christ. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. Wow. Come on, sir. You said you feel like you're weird, seem like that everybody don't, people don't like you because you're being persecuted for Christ. Nations will rise up against you. You are a misfit. That's it. At the time, many were turned away from the faith. We just said, I just said that 78% in the early 2000s proclaimed that Jesus Christ was Lord. Now we're down to 65% of people saying, believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Come on, come on. At the time, many would turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Yes, sir. Is happening right now today. We're on the verge, on the brink of the end times. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to nations that the end will come. My wife the other day, uh, she had a dream about a white horse. And every time she talked about this dream about the white horse, I can only imagine Jesus with his long Galilean legs uh, strapping over the horse and said, all right, boys, you're almost ready. You're almost ready because the end is coming. I'm here to tell you that the end is coming. It's not, not knocking on heaven's door. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is on his way back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
And so I'm here to tell you that the scripture earlier says that but well, you are a chosen generation and you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that shall, shall show forth the praises of him who have caught you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm here to say today that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leads me besides the still waters. The Lord knows I need just a little bit of still water because if I see the rapid water, I might just be crazy enough to jump in. And so he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. <laughs> Hallelujah. One touch ministry, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to fear no evil. The rod of your staff, it will comfort you. The word of God, it is here to comfort you in the name of Jesus. And God shall continue to anoint your head with oil. Your cup shall run over and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I don't you on today, but I thank God that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. One side is goodness and one side is mercy, and it shall follow me all the days of my life. I know you may say that it may be an angel surround about you, but I'm here to tell you that it's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of my life. So today I want to say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, our God and our King. His love endured forever, for He is good and He is above all things. His mercy endured forever. I know that I haven't been the best thing in my life, and I know I haven't done everything right, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that God's mighty hand and His Stretch arms have pulled me out of darkness. Oh, no, y'all didn't hear me. I said, His goodness and His mercy and His outstretched arm pulled me out of darkness into His marvelous light. I don't know about you all today, but I'm so grateful for His love endureth forever. I don't know about you, but His my life is in His hand. His love shall endure forever. For my life has been reborn. His love endure forever. We are misfits. We live in this world, but we are not of this world. Hallelujah. And one day, Jesus, he is coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back on his white horse. He's coming back like a thief in the night. And I'm here to tell you today that I can't wait to meet Jesus. We will be caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. I like the song. It says, just as soon as my feet strike Zion. Just as soon as I get there. As soon as my feet strike Zion. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay all my burdens down. I said, I'm going to lay my burdens down. I want to lay every single weight that has come to oppress me, who that has come to hurt me, every single thing that uh, has come up against me. I'm letting Johnny go. I'm letting Susie go. I'm letting Rebecca go. I'm letting my child go. I'm letting the career go. I'm letting it all go. Just as soon as my feet strike Zion, just as soon as I get there, there'll be no more crying there. There'll be no more dying there. Just as soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm gonna lay down my heavy burdens and I will be singing. I will be shouting and I will be dancing. Leaping in the presence of an almighty God, and I'll be shouting. 
with gold. Hallelujah! Then I'm able to see the angel. Hallelujah! I'll be able to see my mother again. Hallelujah! I'll be able to see my grandmother again. Hallelujah! I'll be able to see my grandparents again. Hallelujah! Just as soon as my feet strike the sun. Just as soon.
30 It's number one. We're not of this world. We may live in this world, but we're not of the world. Number two, we don't supposed to fit in with worldly ways. That's it, that's it. We're not supposed to fit in. My God. We're in the kingdom of God. And so we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Number three, it's time to release that stuff from the past. Yes. Release the hurtful words that people have spoken over you. Yes. Release it. Yes. Don't be deceived by false religion 
and fake leaders. That's point number four. Don't be deceived by false religion yeah. and fake leaders. Yeah. And number five, the end is near. Yeah. Make sure your life is right with Christ. Yeah. Listen, today, we are misfits. Yeah. I'm going to make a search. Honey says we are misfits. That's it. That's it. That's it. We are misfits. We are misfits. We are not made to fit in. We're not made to Why fit not? in. We're not made to fit in. Not how the world says we're supposed to fit in. So on today, I want to challenge you on today to understand that In order for you to make it in this life, you have to be daring to be different. Yeah. You have to dare to be different. Listen, on today, if you're, if you're able, if you're able, I want you guys to be able to sow into the word of God on today. I want you to sow into this powerful word today. Listen, God said that you're misfits. Yeah. That you're not not of this world. You may live in this world, but you're not of this world. I posted the catch up information here. It's number it's dollar sign. If I can find my dollar sign. <laughs> Now I sign one touch in. To be able to sow into the ministry today. I'll put that in the comments. It's the dollar sign number one touch in. Yeah. Also, you can give on our website, one touch ministries.net forward slash give. And you can also give that way. Listen, on next Saturday, this place is going to be next Sunday. Thank you, honey. <laughs> next Sunday. Because you know when you were just caught up in the anointing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> next Sunday at 3 o'clock yes. p.m., we are going to be in this place. Yes. And we're going to give God a praise, a celebration yes. on next week. We're going to have Pastor... Theodore King the third and his family shall be in the house. Yes. Hallelujah. We're gonna have Minister Henry Jackson is gonna be in the house. Yes. We're gonna have Bishop. Woo! Bishop. The Rice is gonna be in the building. And so many more, so many more. I know that uh, Sister Inez is gonna be here. And, yes. Uh, some more people is going to be here. Sister uh, Latoya yeah, is going to be here. Minister Austin. Minister Austin will be here, so I'm so grateful. Um, actually, Bethany House of Praise Woo! is going to be joining us next yes! week as well. And so I'm telling you, you need to get here early to, to get, get a good seat. seat. Actually, I think every seat in the house, right? The way that if y'all want to see how everything is, yes. is formed, I think every single seat is a good seat yes. in this house. It is. It's a really good seat. It really is a really good seat. Continue to pray for us because, listen, God has had us Salvation call. God has had us doing uh, doing double ministry for the past few weeks. Yes. And <laughs> one of the reasons why we started our broadcast late was because we just finished the last service with Bethany House of Praise and there's people laid out everywhere and I was supposed to be ministering to a young man and help him get delivered. I'm over here getting delivered, crying and blue and I'm telling you, it was such, such an amazing time. It was such an amazing time. Yes, yes. So grateful for you doing the work of God. We're also going to be going out to the community today. Going out to the community today? Yes. All right, we're going to walk around to the community today and invite some people to come on out on next week and more weeks to come. 
innocent on today. One of the things that I just stressed is that knowing that Jesus Christ, he's coming. And you have to know that you're ready. A lot of people don't know if they're ready or not. I'm here today to say, hey, listen, examine your heart. Examine your life. God is able to forgive you for every single sin that you have committed in your life. All you have to do is ask God for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. Then you have to learn how to walk out your salvation. One of the things that we um, do here at One Touch Ministries is help you walk out your soul's salvation. And we would love to connect with you. But on today, if you're listening, and you need Jesus to come into your heart and your mind, I just need you to repeat, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my spirit, make me a brand new person. Father God, I believe you, and I confess in my mouth and believe my heart that Jesus was risen from the dead. Yeah. And on today, Satan has no power. Yeah. Satan has no dominion. no dominion. He has to flee from me now in Jesus Christ my name. And I believe yeah. that Jesus is now in my heart. Amen. He is also in my life. Yes, God. And I am free, I am free. from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.